بعد كل بلاء يا ربنا افتح بيننا بكرامة يا من يرى قلبي ولب لحائي يا من أرى أبوابه مفتوحة للسائلين فلا ترد دعائي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بيس شروي كنتني أريد أتعرف بسمي Hazrat Mishri Maud, may God be pleased with him, writes that uh, since the Mishrikeen made different idols out of angels, spirit, and human beings, they cannot, write at <coughs> they cannot uh, unite at one point. Only the Unitarians can uh, unite on. Just as the people who regard themselves as citizens of, the, of different countries cannot get together for a unity, they should be citizen, citizen of the country. This is from Tafsir Sagir, page 528, footnote 4. And uh, this lady gives also a reference from uh, Surah Rum. Which lady? Uh, Islamabad, from Islamabad, oh, here. And uh, also gives reference from Surah Rum, chapter 30, verse. 33, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> uh, God Almighty says that of those who split up their religion and have become divided into sects, every party rejoining in what they have. Uh, her, her question is... Rejoining, rejoicing what they have. Rejoicing, okay, rejoicing. Yes, rejoicing. Yes. And uh, her question is, is it against unity uh, to possess multi citizenship. Dual citizenship. Hmm? Dual citizenship. Uh -huh. <laughs> according to the, that uh, verse and according to the uh, Muslim uh, writing. What did Muslim say against dual citizenship? That I failed to gather from this. Me too. You too. <laughs> Everybody does. So just tell her. First of all, tell you سألت أحد أخت ويعني بنت سؤالها على اقتباس من تفسير أعطاه حضرة الخليفة الثاني لحضرة الإمام المهدي عليه السلام وكيف بين فيه يعني ماهية الوحدة الصحيحة وأيضا بين فيه الدور الذي يلعبه المواطن العادي في هذه الوحدة وذكرت أيضا نفس الأخت آية أخرى من القرآن الكريم على ما أظن من سورة الروم وكان النتيجة الأخيرة التي وصلت إليها بناء على مقتبس وتفسير حضرة المصحى من عبود رضي الله تعالى عنه وهذه الآية القرآنية الكريمة هل يمكن للشخص المسلم أن تكون له يعني جنسيتين في نفس الوقت؟ as far as her references are concerned the excerpts she has chosen from Tafsir and from the verses of the Holy Quran, I do not think that they are relevant to the issue at all. And in this assessment, all of you who have heard her explain the question agree with me that there is no relevance to the excerpts she has chosen and the questions she has raised. As far as the question itself is concerned, my answer is yes. Any Muslim can hold two nationalities, but he will have to be loyal to the laws of the land where he is. If he holds Pakistani nationality, he cannot extend the laws of Pakistani laws, or Pakistani legislation, to England when he is here. If he holds English nationality, British nationality, then when he goes to Pakistan, he cannot impose the British laws on Pakistani territories. That's all he has to do. يقول حاضر المغني يعني لا أرى أن هنالك علاقة 
بين هذا الاقتباس الذي ذكرته هذه الاخت وايضا بين الايه القرانيه ويعني والنتيجه التي وصلت اليها في اخر المطاف في قالب سؤالها هذا ويقول حضرتك قد اشترك معي معظم الحاضرين هنا في الاستوديو في هذه النتيجه ثم يتطرق حضرته ويقول نعم يمكن للمواطن والشخص المسلم ان تكون له جنسيتين وضرب حضرته مثال يقول اذا كان هنالك شخص باكستاني له جواز سفر باكستاني وجواز سفر بريطاني مثلا فينصح هذا المؤمن ويقول لما يكون هذا الشخص متواجد في مده معينه في بريطانيا لا يجب عليه ولا يسمح لنفسه ان يفرض القانون الباكستاني على يعني المواطنين البريطانيين وايضا لما تكون يعني محل اقامته او مكان اقامته بالتحديد في الباكستان يجب عليه ان لا يفرض القوانين البريطانية على حكومة باكستان أو على أهالي باكستان فهذه هي النتيجة السليمة حسب ما اقترحها حضرة أبي المؤمنين Zor Allah has been described Why have you missed Abdurrahman all together? No, I have to go back from right Huh? We start normally from the ladies and go this way No, no We start from this way, that way. Okay. Because <laughs> there's no existence of right-hand movement. Huh? Okay. Right? If we started with uh, Amina Chakmak, then we should come to the Imam Sahib. I see. Then from here to Abdurrahman, and then from him, if any time is left. After Abdurrahman's question. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> your, your turn. No, I don't Okay, okay. Was there a question for on chapter 67, 17, 18? Yes. 67? 17, 18. So, Mulk. Yes. I will say, 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 Do you feel secure from him who is in the heaven that he will not cause the earth to sink with you when lo it begins to shake? Do you feel secure from him who is in the heaven that he will not send against you a heavy sandstorm? Then will you know how terrible was my warning? Hence is sandstorm or whatever else is possible to be translated. Yes. Read it again. Um, Hasiba? Hasiba, yes. They uh -huh. have translated as heavy sandstorm. Uh, consult Arabic dictionary for the word Hasib. Yeah. It could also mean storm of stones or meteors maybe. Yes. So that is why I want you to consult yes. this before we attend this question. Right? I have to go through the real meaning of Haseba and the possible other meanings of Haseba with reference to Arabic lexicon. So after that, inshallah, I'll be able to answer this question. If you have another ready with you, you can ask the next one. And to this we will turn later on, okay? I have a question from chapter 28, verse 87. 87. Auzubillah <coughs> 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 فَلَا تَكُونَنَّا زَهِيرًا لِلْكَافِرِينَ And you did never expect that the book would be revealed to thee, but it is a mercy from thy Lord, so never be a helper of disbelievers. Read the verse again, please. وَمَا كُنْتَ تَرْجُوا أَنْ يُلْقَى إِلَيْكَ الْكِتَابُ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ Expect is the wrong translation. I definitely disagree with this translation. English is correct, of course, but the translation is wrong. Because Rija can also mean other things here. It 
is the other meaning of Rija which is mentioned here. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never expected and never had an ambition to have this. This is the ambition which is mentioned here in this verse. But first of all, please translate and then I'll turn to this question. And the question you have not yet raised, I'm sorry to have interfered with. <laughs> I interfered not with you, but with his yes. translation. No? My question is it's the same. I want to understand the meaning of Mu'akun and Tarchu and Yulqa'i Lekar Kitab. Aha, that's yes. right. Yes. Okay. Please okay. tell what happened in the, in yes. the, in regarding the previous question as well. Yes. Huh? Uh, في بداية الأمر سأل المستر عبد الرحمن عن تفسير آيتين من سورة الملك الآية رقم 17 و 18 وقال حضرة المؤمنين أريد أولا أن تحذروا لي يحذر لي عن الأستاذ عطر مجيب راشد بعض المراجع من المناجد العربية التي تحتوي على معاني حاصبة المذكورة في هذه الآية كي أبني تفسيري بناء على مصطلحات اللغة العربية السليمة والصحيحة ثم سمح للأستاذ عبد الرحمن أن يلقي سؤالا آخر فسأل الأستاذ عبد الرحمن على بخصوص آية من من سورة من سورة القصص الآية رقم 86 و يعني يجيب حضرة بن مؤنين ويقول أنه يعني مبدئيا لا يوافق الترجمة التي سمعناها خصوصا أن الرجاء المذكور في هذه الآية يبدو أنه يختلف من المفهوم ومن مراد الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم إذ أنه لم يكن ينتظر يعني بعض من الأمور التي ذكرت في هذا التفسير ولم تكن فيه يعني نوع من هذه الطموحات التي نريد أن يبينها حضرة أمير المؤمنين ثم رجع أعطت الفرصة للسيد عبد الرحمن مرة أخرى وألقى سؤاله قال بالتحديد يريد أن يعرف مفهوم فلا تكونن ظهيرا للكافرين عفوا آه هذا سؤال سؤاله الثاني وما كنت وما كنت ترجو أن يلقى إليك الكتاب إلا رحمة من ربك فأكد وقال يريد أن يعرف معنا فلا تكون لنا ظهيرا بالكثير وما كنت ترجو أن يلقى إليك الكتاب إلا رحمة من ربك هذا هو سؤال the English translation of this verse, where Rija is uh, translated as expectation. Now, I agree that one connotation of expectation also is uh, one connotation of the word expectation in English also means uh, hope. I expected him to do this. Means I wanted him to do this. I hoped he would do it. But this word here is misleading. Because here the expectation will normally be understood as you expect some things to happen and they do not happen. Not hoping for them but visualizing them to happen. Expectation is something of that nature in English. For instance, if I expect that uh, God will do that to somebody, it's not my wishful thinking. It may be just an assessment. An expectation may mean assessment that perhaps God will do it. But even in that connotation, I think it does not apply to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ahadur sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had not the least idea in his mind of revelation from God. So he did not expect it in either way, in any meaning of it. It did not remotely touch his mind that somebody is going to be raised as a prophet of God and why not he? Even without why not he, he never thought of such a thing at all. So it was a complete surprise to him. 
so complete that when you read the incident of what happened in Hera at the time of first revelation, you can immediately see that Ahadur Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have never had never touched upon this subject. It was just one sided love of God and illumination about the wonders he had created in the world. So a man given up to the study of the universe like Ulul Al Bab do. And uh, loving Allah the Creator with all his heart, that was all that he did. So here the verse should be translated in a slightly different manner, I think. And that should be, you never wished for, not expected. You never wished for this revelation to have occurred, to have bestowed upon you. You're not the slightest part of your own ambition. You know, that is the connotation with which I like to, this verse to be translated. And when you translate it like this, read the whole thing again and I'll tell you what it will mean. وما كنت ترجو أن يلقى إليك الكتاب إلا رحمة من ربك فلا تكون لنا ظهيرا للكافرين. Now, one thing is very clear in this verse that you had absolutely no ambition, no desire, no wish that this revelation will be bestowed upon you. As such, what this means in relation to helping the non-believers. That is the question which should have been raised. You understand? You had no wish, you had no ambition to be the recipient of this revelation. This is entirely as a Rahma from Allah. His Rahmat here <coughs> is, refers to his Rahmaniyat. Because he has created the universe, also he has initiated the universe, religious universe or the universe of spirit or, spirit or the spiritual. So because of that, he had to choose someone who befitted the requirements like Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. His nature was such that he completely tallied with the concept of Rahmaniyat, which was necessary <coughs> for a revelation which related to all the world equally. See, Illa Rahmat Al Alameen should be understood with relation to Al Alameen. No other, other prophet of God you know, qualified in this sense that his Rahma for the whole of the universe or his personal Rahma could be extended to the whole of the universe. So Allah chose you because he thought you fit to discharge this requirement. Understand? So our Rahman and Rahmat al became, you know, overlapping each other. There were different names for the same thing. God wanted to show Rahmaniyat to all the universe in the religion for the first time. Never before a religion was revealed which had the characteristics or attributes of a religion which would apply equally all the world, the black and the white, all inclusive. So Allah tells Ahmad you are the one to discharge this function. That is what I have chosen you. Now this is the dilemma. If he has been chosen, how could he be Zahir al Kafirin? In what sense? The Kufar must have done something mentioned in the previous verses to which this reverse refers. So read the previous verses. The two previous verses are as follows. Please. Man jaa bil hasanate falahu khairum minha 
ومن جاء بالسيئات فلا يجزى الذين عملوا السيئات الا ما كانوا يعملون ان الذي فرض عليك القران لرادك الى معاد قل ربي اعلم من جاء بالهدى ومن هو في ضلال مبين وما كنت ترجو ان يلقى اليك الكتاب الا رحمه من ربك فلا تكونن ظهيرا للكافرين اجي نيكست ولا يسدنك ان ايات الله بعد اذ انزلت اليك ود الى ربك ولا تكونن من المشركين ولا تدع مع الله الها اخر لا اله الا هو كل شيء I always speak on a subject which, on which I am personally satisfied. And as yet I have to find the link. I think once before I contemplated on these verses and I remember having found the link between the two. So let me give me more time again with this verse as well so that I can think of the previous subject as it is discussed. and link the two together by because he did not wish for this prophecy how could he be zahirul lil kafirin in what sense you understand the point so this i i i must say i must admit and confess requires some time for me to ponder over this question a little more So both these things, subjects of discussion, will crop up during our next meeting, right? In the meantime, to translate all of this, how long will it take? I believe around ten minutes. What? Around ten minutes. Yes, okay. Then I will return within ten minutes. Please continue. Yes, and some comments as well. Right, Mr. Bob? <laughs> no, uh, we had to comment as well. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> It's okay. I think I will be back in almost ten minutes. Two minutes late. I think so. Then your estimation. Yes. <laughs> so we begin with with from, from here now. Yes. Yes. I think we. Zor Allah has been described <clears throat> as a samad. How can we understand and correlate this with the following verse of the Holy Quran? وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ Please explain your question. Yes. Allah has been described as a samad. He doesn't need, he doesn't require anything from another's, from others. And uh, in the other verse says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That is again the next an explanation of the word asamad. All the creation of Allah requires him and he does not require them. This is the meaning of asamad and this is the meaning of this verse. Read the verse again and I'll show you how. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ They all depend on Allah. Ibadat, as I have explained, is not for the sake of Allah, it is for the sake of those who do worship. So the dependence is on Allah. And the dependence of all the creatures is upon Allah. <coughs> Here, let me elaborate the meaning of as-samad in Surah Al-Ahad. As-samad can resurrect the meaning of a huge rock to which the word in Arabic refers. A huge rock is unshakable. and so lofty that it cannot be drowned. When there is a great flood raging all around this rock, the only support the life gets is from turning to this rock and all animals which can make it for the rock, they always go and occupy the rock until the flood is over. Everything is drowned 
but the rock and whoever has the support of the rock. This meaning is also the meaning mentioned in the verse Allahu Samad. Now Samad in Arabic is translated into in many other possible versions of the translation as you find in the dictionary but this too also is mentioned in the dictionary. I prefer this meaning over all others because it exactly tallies with the subject of discussion of Surah Allah had. So Allah Qul Hu Allah Ahad. Allah is alone. But if He is alone, then what about this? The entire living system of the universe, of the world at least. So many other things also in the universe, and we cannot say He is Ahad. But if you conjure up the meaning of that rock which I discussed, then suddenly you begin to understand that all else is dependent for its existence upon Allah and without seeking His support nothing can exist. Have you got the meaning? Yes. As someone is that God whose assistance is sought for all forms of existence. So, Allah Ahad remains valid with all the creation of Allah which is limitless. Because the moment Allah ceases to support that creation, the creation will disappear. This is the meaning of many verses which refer to the final, the ultimate end of the universe. Because Allah will cease to support this universe separately and down it will go and collapse. So all the time, everything which exists requires the support of Allah. <coughs> now about Ibadat. So Fatiha tells us that al ibadah is not for the sake of Allah, is for the sake of those who worship Him. On this I have spoken, I think, uh, during my Udu class as well. The most important thing, I think in the Juma or in the Udu class? In the Juma. Uh, Juma also, also I mentioned this. When we mention four attributes of God, Rab, Rahman, Rahim, Malik, even if you don't go into the details of these attributes, any one can understand that he is seeking a link with the Rab to his own favor, for, is for his own favor. Whoever is Rab in the world, in a very confined area of the world, Rabubiyat, everybody runs for that Rab to, to, have, in, to gain intimate relationship with him. For whose sake? Not for the sake of that limited rub, but for his own sake. Similarly, everybody who is Rahman, everyone else loves that Rahman, Rahman that, that symbol of Rahmaniyat. He wants to get close to that symbol of Rahmaniyat, not to help him, but to help himself. That also goes alike with Rahimiyat and Malikiyat of God. Now when you say, when you say these things about Allah's attributes, if you seek any favors from Rabubiyat, Rahmaniyat, Rahimiyat and Malikiyat, how can it be, in any sense, a favor to Allah? It will be exactly the opposite. And this exactly is what Surah Fatiha repeats after this, uh, instructs after this. Surah Fatiha requires us to say, O oh God, to be in touch with you, 
is like having all, to possess all your attributes and their benefits. So we promise we want to worship you. And none else. For whose sake? For our sake. Worshipping such a God will do no favor to him. But will do every favor to the persons who worship him. And that is why it is followed, this uh, resolution is followed by Iyya Kanastain. The gains will be ours, the benefits will flow from your direction to us. But even a promise to worship you and to none else is impossible without your help. Now here to seek the help of God and of none else is implied in this. And what about the Asamad? That again is another version of the same thing which I have explained with reference to Shravatya. So Ibadat and Samadhiyat go hand in hand. Ibadat on the part of the creation and Samadhiyat on the part of God. That is why Allah has mentioned elsewhere in, 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 in the Quran that we do not understand that every creation of His pays attribute, uh, pays uh, uh, compliment or worships God in the sense, in a sense that we do not understand. Everything which is created is dependent upon Him. And if he leaves that creation, the creation will cease to exist. That is the ultimate meaning of that worship which we cannot understand. Answered? Yes. Good. Alhamdulillah. Now with that, I think this is going to be the end of this, as far as I am concerned. So you better continue explaining these things and uh, give me leave to go and attend other things. Okay, all right? All right. Sorry. Wow. Sorry. 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 Sorry.